Hey folks, Grant from Gunspot here for Tolster.com. In today's video, we're gonna address should I or should I not carry with a round in the chamber? Round in the chamber during carry, yes or no? Well, in short, yes, and to prove it, let's go out on the range. We've got a, a basic test set up to prove to you why you should. Okay, so we're out here at the range and we're going to really just look at one metric for why you shouldn't carry with an empty chamber or why it's important to have that round in the chamber already at the start of the gunfight. And so um, we could go into a lot of different pros and cons, very few pros for having an empty chamber. However, if uh, you're concerned about shooting yourself, I guess that's a pretty big pro, but we're gonna look at the speed aspect. Now, without going into the hard evidence, I will tell you that speed is relative to the individual. You could have a guy like Jerry Mishlick or a guy like Scott Jedlinski, who both are lightning fast operators of their gun. And they're going to be empty chamber faster than what us mere mortals are going to be with a round in the chamber. And so you have to look at it in relative terms to you yourself. So what we're going to do to kind of capture this time is I'm going to have a gun with empty chamber, um, but I'm going to have my loaded magazine in the gun and I'm going to draw I'm going to have to, of course, go through my cover garment clearance. I'm going to have to put a round in the chamber, reacquire support hand grip, and put a round on the target. We're gonna do that a couple times to, to formulate kind of the average time that it takes me to do that. Then I'm going to do the same draw from concealment, grip, and presentation one shot on the target with the round already in the chamber, just to, to show what it takes for me to put in those extra steps of loading the gun. And of course, guys, and this is probably the biggest issue, uh, aside from speed, it's going to be a two-handed operation. I've got to have that support hand to efficiently put around in the chamber. Not that I can't rack it off of something um, else. We know we can do that, but that is more timely to bring the gun out of the holster, transition to the belt, then bring it back up into the direction of the target and present on the target. So this is the most efficient way of putting that round into the gun in a range setting. Um, keeping in mind that I'm probably not going to have two hand support in a gunfight anyway. I'm probably not gonna be at, at this distance of five plus yards. It's probably going to be point blank. I may be taking impact blows. I might be getting stabbed. All those things are going to really make the time element that much more important. So here we go, empty chamber, drawing, charging the gun, presenting one round on the target. One point nine three seconds. Let me set it up again. I'll put my dollar and 10 cents away. One point six seven, one more time for good measure. One point six two. So 
let's say in a perfect world, I'm always at 1.62, okay? Um, now I'm going to have loaded chamber. It's gonna cut me out or save me a step in the process. And let's see, not only am I gonna be faster, but are my shot quality going to improve any? I, I'm almost going to guarantee you um, that my shot quality is gonna improve because I'm staying more linear with my sights to the target. Let's go and, and see if that is true. One oh five. One more time. One seventeen. One eleven. Ninety nine. All right. I'm, I'm almost a full, even at my worst, I'm a half a second faster without having to, to put that round in the chamber. Again, it, it allows me, if all I had was one hand, I have to do nothing but present the gun on target. So just off the clock, I'm going to always be faster with a round in the chamber. And, and that just makes obvious sense because I'm not having to do an extra step. I'm not having to change anything. I'm able to take that extra half a second, if you will, um, and make a more perfected shot. Now, shots weren't that great. I'm, I'm really trying to, to push the pace in both, but without a doubt, um, it, when time is of the essence, to use that old adage, you know, cops are just a phone call away. Well, if I'm my own backup, the fewer steps that I have to take when I've made that deadly force decision, the better I'm going to be at um, in, in relation to surviving. Time is working against me when I'm the victim, when I'm being attacked. Okay, so the fewer steps that I have to execute flawlessly is going to end up with better results for me onto the target. All right, folks, so we obviously conducted our drill at, at right at five yards, which is well beyond the average police shooting. Um, and I would guess probably well beyond the average private citizen shooting as well. Keep in mind, if somebody's assaulting you, they're probably within arm's reach. Now, if you put that into context, and I've got to now draw my gun. I've got to create enough space to get my hands away from blocking blows to get my gun out in the first place. And now I've got to put around in the chamber. I don't have that time and that luxury in that close context of close quarters battle to be able to do that effectively. Um, I know that there are institutions like the Israeli military that that preaches um, empty chamber. And you have to put it into the, the context. The pistol is a secondary weapon system for them. They're running a rifle, that is their primary. They're not going out there with an empty rifle and, and you know casting it aside. The pistol is the backup. So it shouldn't be treated in the same context as them. So guys, this is where the fight is. That was just for show and to develop times. Please um, consider wisely when you choose to carry empty chamber.